Yet another Republican congressman has decided to quit his job rather than deal with a toxically dysfunctional GOP House majority. Mike Gallagher of Wisconsin just started serving in the House in 2017, relatively young guy. And he's kind of a standard conservative Republican. He's got a plum assignment as the head of the Select Committee on China. He voted with Trump most of the time, voted in favor of tax cuts against abortion. Today he announced he'll be leaving Congress, wait for it, not at the end of the year, on April 19th. He, he, he can't take it. He needs to get out. He's not even going to serve out the next 10 months, which will leave the Republican Party with one of the slimmest majorities in history. Last month, you might recall, they lost the special election for the seat formerly occupied by George Santos. Then Colorado Republican Ken Buck resigned. His last day was today. Again, he's not waiting around till the end of the term. And now Mike Gallagher is like, peace, everyone. As of tonight, Republicans have a 218 to 213 majority. So they can only lose two votes on a party line bill. Once Gallagher leaves, they can only lose one vote. If more than one single Republican deflects after, 19, after April 19th, they lose the vote. They will need Democrats to help pass legislation. The 118th Congress is in utter shambles. So you can understand a bit why Gallagher and Buck want out. Just look at what happened there today, okay? First, a majority of Republicans voted against Speaker Mike Johnson's big spending bill to keep the government open and funded. Then Marjorie Taylor Greene filed a motion to kick him out of his job. Today I filed a motion to vacate after Speaker Johnson has betrayed our conference and broken our rules. This is basically a warning and it's time for us to go through, through the process, take our time and find a new Speaker of the House that will stand with Republicans and our Republican majority instead of standing with the Democrats. Sal Kapoor is a senior national political reporter for NBC News who's been covering this bad day for House Republicans as he writes it up, and he joins me now. Um, there's a lot to get to here, so let's just start with the Gallagher announcement, because I just, I, I want to stress to people, this really doesn't happen that much. I mean, you've got Kevin McCarthy leaving, leaving. Ken Buck, now Gallagher. Like, d how did this land in, in the Capitol today? Well, it was shocking to many Republicans, Chris. It's exceedingly rare to see this many prominent members of a majority party in the House resign mid-session. And Gallagher was a particularly shocking one because he is one of the youngest Republicans in the chamber. He has been, you know, pegged as a rising star within the party. He's only 40 years old. He just turned 40 uh, recently. And he has decided he's had enough of this place. His one recent vote that went against his party was the vote uh, on impeaching Alejandro Mayorkas. He voted against that. Uh, he said uh. it was not a good idea. And other than that, he's generally voted with the team. He's not been someone who's, you know, who's been bucking the party line or, or making demands of the party necessarily. So that was a particularly uh, shocking uh, situation that, that Gallagher is leaving. Kind of a, a you know, reminder that institutionalists in the party are not very happy these days. Uh, let me just n note that Mike Gallagher and Buck, uh, along with Tom McClintock, were, were two of the three, right? So people who are <laughs> eyeing the exits were like, yeah, this is nonsense. Uh, uh, so now you've got this situation where the majority, oh, first of all, my understanding is according to Wisconsin law, there will be no special that he, if, if he, he, if he left earlier, like April 2nd, there would have been a special election, but waiting to April 19th means the seat stays open the rest of the year and the, the Republicans can't get that back. Yeah, that does seem to be the situation right now, Chris, which makes it even harder for Speaker Johnson to be able to govern for the rest of this year. He's looking at a one-seat majority, as you just pointed out. The margins are going down, down, down. There are some vacancies uh, left to fill, although there's a chance that one safe Democratic seat in New York could be filled, which thins his margin even further, uh, makes it even tougher for him in the event of an absence or two to pass bills. And the, the Ken Buck situation, that, that's very instructive. I mean, Ken Buck is a conservative hardliner. He's a member of the Freedom Caucus. He has unassailable fiscal conservative credentials, so conservative, in fact, that he cost his party a Senate seat in Colorado years ago for being too conservative. And now he has been essentially airbrushed out of the party because last fall he stood up and started demanding that the new speaker, the last Last time they, you know, when they evicted Kevin McCarthy, stand up and reject the big lie that the 2020 election was stolen. He wanted an emphatic statement that the 2020 election was legitimate. It was won by Joe Biden and that Donald Trump simply lost. And that didn't sit well with his party. And since then, it's been a downward spiral to the point where he's decided, I don't even want to finish my term here. I'm out. 
Yeah, I mean, it it's, makes sense for that to be a, a, a litmus test for people's participation in any sort of mainstream American institution, politics, media, whatever, that you reject the big lie. Um, it seems uh, that the, the, the actual voting that happened today means we're going to get a deal in the Senate. But again, the Marjorie Taylor Greene motion to vacate, which is a sort of fake one, I don't even know what they want. They don't know what they want. The whole thing is such a mess. There's no unifying governing vision. All they can unify around is Donald Trump, which in some ways makes him more vital to them. But it, it seems to me that there's nothing binding the whole caucus together, no shared vision of what they want to do with the levels, levers of power. Well, Chris, I read the Marjorie Taylor Greene thing today as more of a warning shot. It's basically her saying to Speaker Johnson, if you step out of line again, I'm going to pull the trigger on this, and you're going to have to find the votes to stay uh, in power. It's not clear to me that Marjorie Taylor Greene even has the votes today to remove Mike Johnson. I cannot name a single Republican who has come out and said that they would vote to evict him if that vote were to come up today. In fact, two of the, the GOP lawmakers who voted to remove Kevin McCarthy last fall, um, I spoke to them in the last few days. That's Bob Good and Matt Gates. Both of them told me... Uh, uh, well, Matt Gates said he explicitly opposes a motion to vacate the chair and remove Mike Johnson. And uh, Bob Good, who's the current chair of the Freedom Caucus, uh, said he's not going there, that his, you know, he was not uh, going down that road today. He just wanted to talk about the policy of the bill. And in terms of the, the governing fractures you pointed out, that's another serious problem here. I mean, you saw that a majority of House Republicans voted against that government funding bill today that Speaker Mike Johnson struck with Democrats. Again, remember, this is a divided government. They're not going to get what they want. You can't that's change That's a huge the deal to, of to lose a majority, to lose a majority of your own caucus. Like, it, functionally, it renders them a useless majority because you can't actually pass a thing with a majority of them. Yeah, that's been the, the problem that Speaker Johnson has had for a while. He can't even pass a so-called rule anymore because, you know, enough of his members will defect on this procedural process that had been so rote that it was barely, barely known to people. He has to do this so-called suspension of the rules, which requires two-thirds to get anything done, and that required a two-thirds majority today. They needed 67 percent of the chamber. They got 68 percent of the chamber wow. for that $1.2 trillion spending bill. That bill almost failed. Uh, because of that, of the Republican infighting. But nevertheless, it did pass, which is important. He got it through. Now it's gone over to the Senate, which is struggling to get agreement to pass this. We might be stumbling into a government shutdown tonight, Chris. The one thing this divided Congress, for all its problems, was able to do up until now is avoid a government shutdown. It looks like that's going to end tonight after four stopgap bills, after months and months of negotiating. We're halfway through the fiscal year. I don't think I've, I've ever seen an appropriations process quite like this before. All right, Sahil Kapoor, thank you very much.